what is new marketing? I'd like to share with you a research study first. In 1999, a group of researchers did a study at a wine store. They want to find out if the store's background music could impact shoppers' wine selections. And this is what they found. On the days when they played German music, German wines, also French wines, by three to one. Then on the days when they play French music, French wines, also German wines, by three to one. But this is not the end of the story. Here's the kicker. They asked shoppers if the background music influenced their wine selections. You probably could guess. Over 90% of shoppers say no. This study raised a very important question. That question is, how do consumers decide? On one side, the brain represents the conscious mind, the conscious decision making. Here we have facts, reason, and logic. On this side, the heart represents the unconscious mind, the unconscious decision making. Here we have emotions, feelings, and intuition. The real question is, do consumers make conscious decisions rationally based on facts, reason, and logic? Or do they make unconscious decisions irrationally based on emotions, feelings, or intuition? With traditional marketing, the focus has been primarily on the conscious mind and conscious decision making. There are two fundamental beliefs here. The first one is consumers do make conscious decisions based on facts, reason, logic. Emotions, feelings, intuition are not enough to tip the balance here. And consumers think and behave rationally before buying. The second fundamental belief is this. Because consumers make their buying decisions with their full conscious awareness, they can recall, they can tell why they bought what they bought. If you want to understand their decision making, all you need to do is ask them. This traditional marketing model can explain many buying decisions. For example, if I, bought, I need to buy a new laptop, I narrow my choice down to two. One is Toshiba, one is HP. And they're priced about the same, but the Toshiba has a bigger screen, faster processor, more memory. I'm going to choose the Toshiba. If you ask me five months later why I bought the Toshiba, I can tell you exactly why. But this new traditional marketing model cannot explain what happened at the wine store. Because based on the sales figures, we know that the background music did influence shoppers' wine selections. The shoppers could not articulate why they bought what they bought simply because their decisions were made without their full conscious awareness. Now let's look at newer marketing. With newer marketing, the focus means shift from the conscious decision making to the unconscious decision making. There are also two fundamental beliefs here. The first one is, Consumers make most of their buying decisions unconsciously based on emotions, feelings, and intuition. Facts, reason, and logic are not enough to tip the balance here. Consumers think and behave very irrationally before buying. The second fundamental belief is this. Because consumers make most buying decisions without their full conscious awareness, you cannot rely on what they tell you. This new marketing model can explain very well what happened at the wine store. And also, this, line, this new marketing model can be is supported by the following three lines of evidence. The first line of evidence comes from neuroscience research. Over the last 15 to 10, 20 years, neuroscience research has confirmed that over 95% of our decisions, including buying decisions, are made unconsciously. This may come as a surprise because we, this contradicts what we always believe. We always believe that we have the most developed brain, we have free will, we have the power over our own thoughts. But when it comes to decision making, I hate to break this to you, the unconscious mind is the boss. Our decisions are constantly driven by our emotions, impulses, and habits. We don't really have too much control over it. The second line of evidence that supports the new marketing model comes from medical studies. Medical studies have demonstrated that without emotions, we simply cannot make decisions. Inside our brain, we have many highly specialized areas. Each area has unique functions. For example, we have the cerebellum, which is responsible for moving and balancing. We have this large area of the brain, which we call the visual cortex, which is responsible for seeing. This large area of the brain, colored in blue, is what we call the limbic system, is the emotional brain. All our emotions come from this part of the brain. Our love, compassion, optimism, pride, joy, happiness, as well as anger, fear, anxiety, and sadness, they all come from this part of the brain. Next, I'd like to share with you how Google taps its users' unconscious behavior to maximize the revenue. We all have done Google searches before. Every time you plug in the keyword search, and Google shows you these uh, paid advertisements. They all colored in blue. And every time you click on these links, Google makes money. One click can be $5, $50, or even $500. 
Of course, Google wants the user to click on these ads more frequently. We know that color can impact how we taste, and, color, and for hundreds and thousands of years, we know color can impact our emotions, our behaviors. The question Google wants to ask is, can the subtle change of color blue in these blue links change the user's clicking behavior? In 2014, Google tested close to 50 shades of blue in these blue links. Google wants to find out if certain shades of blue could generate more clicks. One shade of blue stood out. It did generate significantly more clicks. By adopting this shade of blue, Google increases annual revenue by $200 million. And this is the power of neural marketing. If you know what clicks with the brain, you can apply that knowledge to create a better enhanced experience for your users or your customers. And that better enhanced experience can translate into a stronger bottom line for you. And this is how neural marketing works. I'd like to close my talk with one more story. And this story was brought to people's attention by Richard Thaler in his book, Nudge. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the National Public Radio, and many media outlets reported this story. The story is very easy to understand, but it's very difficult to forget. And the story really has some bathroom humor, literally and figuratively. It's about urinal spillage. When a guy stands in front of a urinal, he starts doing his business mindlessly, aimlessly. Spillage happens. When spillage happens, it costs money to clean it up, and it's a universal problem. In the 1990s, the Amsterdam airport came up with a brilliant solution. All they did was they etched the image of black fly near the drain urinal. <laughs> when, gu <laughs> when guys see that black fly, they start aiming at it unconsciously. And that, no instructions needed. That reduced the spillage by 80%. You may be thinking, Terry, other than your poor taste of humor, what's your point? <laughs> I like this fly because it's a good metaphor for marketing. When it comes to marketing, business owners and marketers very often always want to find a game changer. But very often, they look for the game changers all in the wrong places. Sometimes they just throw something at the wall, see if it sticks. But if you understand how the brain works, you understand how we make this, our decisions, you can find this game changer that can have a huge impact on your bottom line. But very often, the most fascinating thing is this game changer is something we don't even pay attention to. It can be something very subtle, like the background music of the wine store, like a good authentic story by Rito, like a slight change of color by Google, or like a slight and noticeable speed improvement by Amazon, or like placing this fly as a target. Once you find something subtle by following your signs, the impact is everything but subtle. You all want to outsmart your competition. You all want to make your business thrive. Here's something I encourage you to try. Find your flag. And thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.